Today, we read the word of God from the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, from verse 1 to 20, and the second reading from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 6, from verse 1 to 11. In the first reading, Isaiah is prophesying just after the death of a king that is called Uzziah, uh, and now Isaiah has accepted the call of God to come and serve. When Uzziah was alive, if you read from Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah did not see God. Isaiah could not hear God. Hakuskiza, wala hakuona, kwa sababu machoyake, all his interest and focus was on the king and pleasing Uzziah. But in chapter 6, Isaiah says that, but when Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And in chapter 1, Uzziah has died, and Isaiah has now seen the Lord. Isaiah can now hear the Lord. Isaiah can now go and tell Judah and Jerusalem what God wants for them. And in chapter 1, Isaiah is writing slightly before the destruction of the first temple of Jerusalem. And he is warning the people that if you do not repent, you will be destroyed. God is in disdain. God has hated your sacrifices. God is tired with the way that you're behaving. God is angry. And his wrath is coming if you do not listen. He is telling Israel that instead of repenting your sins and giving your hearts openly to God, what you're doing is doing cover-ups. You are giving sacrifices. You are bringing offerings that God is not accepting because your hearts are not broken and contrite before him. He is saying that what you're giving to God is lip service. It is not from the heart. You are giving him service and offering and sacrifices that are given by dirty hands. In law, we say that he who comes to equity, in the law of equity, we say that he who comes to equity must come with clean hands. If we come to God, 
and we need his blessing, and we need him to respond to our issues, we must come with hands that are clean. We must come with hearts that are clean. Otherwise, he will reject our pleas. Buona Sifiwe. In the book of Corinthians, Corinth is a city that is right in the heart of Greece, just close to Athens. And Paul is writing the letter to the Corinthians at a time when Greek philosophy has really taken shape. The Greeks have started the age that, is, that in history is called the age of enlightenment. And they are questioning things. They are question, questioning existence. They are questioning God. They are questioning knowledge. They are questioning philosophy questions. Everything and anything. So the Greeks have started. And the, Greek, and the Greeks have influenced the rest of the world to speak Greek and to study Greek and their philosophy. So Paul, on his missionary journey, visits Corinth, which is a city that is an intersection between Asia and Western Europe, because power during that time was in Italy. Remember, this is the time of the Roman Empire. So the rest of the world wants to come to Italy. The rest of the world wants to come to Rome. So Corinth is very crucial. So Paul visits Corinth, and he spends an year and a half. And what he does while he is in Corinth is that he visits the synagogues, the churches, the fellowships, and he sits and debates with men. And he reasons with them through their knowledge, through their philosophy. He starts from the point of philosophy, from the point of knowledge, until he arrives at the point of reason and faith. So after a year and a half, Paul has already been able to convince a group that becomes the church of Corinth to be Christians. Buona Sifiwe. So when he leaves Corinth and goes to a place that is called Ephesus, a few months later, he receives a report that the Christians in Corinth are in conflict. They are in arms against one another. They are fighting. There is immorality in the church. Christians are taking brother and brother are taking each other to court. They are killing each other. Those are the issues that are in Corinth. So in chapter 6, where we have read from, Paul is asking the Corinthians, is there nobody mature among you to whom you can bring your small cases? Small, small cases, kidogo, kidogo, hapa. Hey, who you menyangalia vibaya, kotini. Hey, hey, hey. I have a lawyer, I can take you to court. That is how they were behaving. And Paul is telling them, no, 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 no. We cannot continue behaving like this. Because we are people of faith. We have the capacity to resolve our disputes amicably. Paul is pointing the church in Corinth to what today is being called ADR. Alternative, dispute, resolution methods. Paul is telling them, within the church, there should be mature people to whom you can bring your disputes. Small, small cases. It is shameful. It is unchristian to do so. And if you compare Isaiah and Paul, and what they are addressing, they are addressing issues that are with us in society. These issues were not only there during Bible times. These issues were not only in antiquity. They were not only in history. 
These issues are right here with us. Because whatever you find in the Bible is a reflection of what society is. Praise the Lord. So when Isaiah complains about a society that has people that want to give God only lip service, but not their hearts, he is speaking about the church of today. Praise the Lord. When Paul is speaking about a Christian church that is full of conflict and envy and fighting and immorality and drunkardness, he is addressing issues that are right here with us. Bonasifiwe. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. But I love where we, we are drawing our theme this year from. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Irrespective, notwithstanding all these issues, God is saying, come, let us raise on together. Bonasifiwe. God is not out to punish people. God is not out to condemn God is not out to make people suffer. God is willing to have a tete a tete. God is willing to have a sit down. And he is making an invitation. And he is telling his church, come, let us, let us address the root of the problem. Because when you see people behaving in a certain way, it means that there is a root that needs to be uprooted. Whenever there are conflicts among Christians, it means that there is a root that has not been addressed. There is a pain that has been untouched. Somebody somewhere is hurting and they have not addressed the issue that is hurting them. People in church are dealing with rejection. They have been rejected since they were children. They have been rejected and they have been rejected and they are still being re rejected. And so they cut the pain of rejection. They carry bitterness in their hearts. Christians carry bitterness in their hearts. They carry unforgiveness. We carry these things. Sifiwe. So we are a people that are living in pain we are a people that are hurting. We are a people that have wounds inflicted to us from various directions, from our parents, from our siblings, from the ones we loved, from people we had put our hope in. We are wounded. But God is giving us an invitation today and he's telling us, Come, let us reason together. Come, let us, let us have a sit down. Let us talk about it. Let us talk about how you really feel. Let us talk about that issue that caused you pain. Let us address it. Don't hide it anymore. Don't hide it. Don't put it under the carpet and say, that one, that one, you are si young gay. No, God is telling you, so that I can restore you, so that I can heal you, so that we can move forward together, we have to address it. And brothers and sisters in Christ, this is my submission to you, that so that we can move forward, so that we can be a healed nation, so that we can be healed families, so that we can be people who bless but not curse, so that we can be people who inspire others but not discourage them, we need to address some root issues. Buonasifiwe. Kuna mambo ambayo lazima we open up. And I love how God deals with us because he is gentle. God is not judgmental. Ukija kwake, he will not ask you, 
Why did you do this? He will not tell you, oh, this is too embarrassing, I can't even listen. God is willing to listen. He is willing to reason it out. He is willing to show you the points of trigger, the trigger points that cause you to behave the way you behave sometimes. He is willing to take you back. He is willing to tell you, okay, Leo, Leo, your attitude is like this. Today, this is the way you are talking to people. This, this is the way you are behaving. But let us go back. Let us go back from today, eh, alafu jana, eh, 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 backwards, backwards, eh, you, eh, that person you dated and they hurt you, that ex, eh, uh-huh. let us go to the first one, eh, uh-huh. the 17th, eh, uh-huh. let us address, let us go back, let us dig, let us cry together. Have a shoulder to lean on and let us speak about it. And I love God because he's a God of discretion. God does not expose his people to shame. He invites you and he tells you, let us reason together. And when you start reasoning with him, in secret you will be crying in secret, utaku meja machozi na makamasi because you have been crying in the secret place. But when you come out, he will cover you with glory. Amen. The Bible says that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall rest under the shadow of the Almighty. So if you persist and go and dig in the secret place and tell him these are my points of pain I have been rejected here I have been hurt I have been wounded I have carried bitterness I have carried this pain in the secret place he will hide you under his shadow and he will not expose you but he will help you deal with it and when you have dealt with it he will heal you he will heal you. And when he heals you, he, by his spirit, he will equip you. He will not leave you empty-handed. There is the fruit of the spirit in place of pain, in place of heart, in place of anxiety, in place of fear, in place of unforgiveness, in place of bitterness. He will replace that with joy, with peace, with hope, with kindness, with gentleness, with self-control. He will fill you up. Buonasifiwe. The Holy Spirit will fill you up. When you address it, he will uproot it. And in place of that root, he will plant something different. Buonasifiwe. Where you have not been sure, he will give you hope and confidence in him. And he will tell you, I got this. As you continue exposing, as you continue dealing, as you continue opening up to the Lord, there is more healing. He's saying in the Bible that though your sins are as red as scarlet, Though there are issues you have thought he cannot address. Though there are issues that are so embarrassing. Though there are pains that you have thought you can never come out of. Though there are people you have thought you, you will never forgive. Though, they are, though you have felt what you have felt. Though you have fallen in sin. God is telling you that even if is as red as scarlet. The ile red imeshika. He is able to clean you up. Bwana sifiwe. He is able to clean you up. He is willing to clean it up. 
He is willing to take it all. He is willing to carry the blame. He is willing to, uh, willing to carry the pain. He is willing to take that bitterness and that unforgiveness. And he is saying in your word, take my yoke, for it is lighter. Bwana Sifiwe, brothers and sisters, we don't have to carry heavy burdens anymore. We have a God who is giving us an invitation and he is telling us, bring it. Bring it. Come, let us talk about it. And I will clean you up. He further continues to say that though they are as crimson, they shall become like wool. Bwana Sifiwe, Though they are like crimson, I would turn, I would turn it around. I would turn it around. He would turn it around for his glory. He is willing to give you a turn around. He is willing to begin again with you. He is willing to give you another chance. He is willing to to put those broken pieces of your heart together. He is willing to carry you under his wings and he is willing to stick by you because the Bible says that he is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Bwana Sifiwe, he is the friend that will carry your pain as if it were his own. He is the friend that understands just how much it hurts. Bwana Sifiwe, People could tell you that we are together, that I understand that it is hurting, but they don't. But Christ Jesus became man. He cried. He was in pain. He was hated. He was rejected. So he understands exactly how it feels. So when you take that pain, when you bring that issue to him, he is God who has become man, Emmanuel, God with us who feels what we feel, who understands what we don't understand. What if he were? He is Emmanuel. He is with us. He is not against us. And I love his Holy Spirit because his Holy Spirit is not God with us, but he is God in us. What if he were? Because a person you are with could leave you in the evening or in the morning. But a God in us will never leave. That is why he has said in his word that I will not leave you nor forsake you. When I see you, Hadi mwisho wa dahari ulisema huniachi Wewe ni Mungu uliyemwaminifu siku zote Mimi ninaiweka imani yangu kwako Bwana Umeahidi Umeahidi ewe bwana huniati hadi mwisho hadi mwisho adahari ulisema huniati wewe ni Mungu wewe ni Mungu uliyemwaminifu siku zote ninaiweka mimi nine Hallelujah. Who is in this congregation? And they are saying, My hope is in you. I am giving you my pain. I am trading my sorrow. I am trading my pain. I am trading that rejection. I am trading that heart. I am trading that issue that has grown into a mountain. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is making an invitation this morning. He's making an invitation now. And he's telling us, come, let us reason together. Let us be upstanding.
worshiped him kindly in in a minute or two umeahidi ewe bwana huniachi huniachi hadi mwisho wa dahari ulisema huniachi wewe ni mungu wewe ni mungu niye mwaminifu siku zote ninaiweka mitaiweka imani yangu kwako bwana Hadi mwisho wa dahar 